Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a frequency polygon. It'll be the same frequency polygon that I used in Lecture 2B, um, dealing with the heights of students in this course. So I want to start off in Excel, and I'm going to set up two categories. The first one's going to be height, which will correspond to the x-axis or horizontal axes. And the second will be frequency, which is how many people who have heights in that particular class. Now, um, our data for this ranged from, I believe, 60-something to 70-something. I think setting up the ranges in with 63, 66, 69, 72, 75, and 78 makes it possible for us to have a closed-end frequency polygon with the um, first and last bins having a value of zero. That means that it'll go down all the way to the to the x-axis and, and make the shape closed at both ends, meaning it touches the x-axis. Then we had seven people in the first bin, six, five, zero, and then our really tall person in the last bin. All right, now that the data are entered, what I want to do is I want to tell Excel how to turn this into the type of graph I want. Now I had to dink around with this a little bit because there isn't just a set chart for a frequency polygon. I mean at first I thought it was going to be this area thing and when I clicked on it I went whoa that's so not what I want. And so I deleted it and said okay it looks like I'm going to have to kind of figure out how to make Excel do what I want. Now I know that what I want is going to have these values at major tick marks along the horizontal axes, and it's going to have heights corresponding to the frequency um, at each of these different heights. I guess I use the word heights twice, but it's going to have a dot, I guess, at 63 and 7, 66 and 6. Then those dots are connected and everything underneath is shaded. So after messing around a little bit, and it did take me a little while to figure this out, all right. What I did was I found if I started with a scatter plot, so I went to insert scatter, and just a basic scatter plot here, that it seems to me that I'm getting to the right idea because I've got my heights along the x-axis and a frequency count along the y-axis because this dot right here, this top dot, um, is clearly at 7 and 60 something, and so 63 seems reasonable. Now I just have to kind of mess with this graph's um, preferences to figure it out. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to change the chart type because sometimes the chart type um, will solve a lot of problems for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this chart type and I'm going to find one that has labels on both the X and the Y axes. Um, I don't want to choose the one that has uh, this bet fit, best fit line in it. We'll use that later in the course, but for right now I just want to choose one where I've got nice, easy access to axes titles. I know I'm not going to need this legend because I'm only going to be plotting one set of data on this graph, so I'll just delete that. And notice that Excel nicely resizes for us. Now, I could show this frequency polygon continuous from zero, but it's a little misleading because we have nowhere even close to anyone at a height of zero inches. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the axes and I'm going to start messing with the axes options. First, I want the minimum value to be 60. And then the maximum value to be 78. And my major unit happened every three inches. So this is what I did, is I just started with this and went for it and saw what happened. Ah, that's pretty good. I like that, all right? Because right now I've got all of my heights that I wanted. Those are the midpoints of the bins, all right? And I have dots corresponding to the frequency at each of those heights. Now what I want to do, though, is I want to get it into the frequency polygon look. And this is where it got a little bit interesting. Oops, I'm going to hit close there. I double clicked on that. Um, I want to actually change this chart type now that I've got it set up to um, be that area type that we talked about before. 
and it didn't work when I just automatically clicked on it but like I said after dinking around with this for a little while I found that if I then change the chart to an area type after I have all of these preferences set that um, it makes it possible for me to get what a frequency polygon is supposed to look like. All right, excellent, almost done. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change these titles. Now I double clicked and it opened up that window. So then I closed it and I tried to double click again and this time it did what I wanted, which was to let me change the axis title. Now this was height in inches and the Y axis was frequency. And then you always want to give graphs a nice descriptive title. So frequency polygon heights of RSM 5100 and yeah, we'll be specific OL1 spring 2012 students. And I don't want the title to have so much dominance in the the graph, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce the font a little bit. Um, maybe not that much. There we go. And that is how you have a frequency polygon. You can now take this, see how I've selected it on the outside, and I can copy that, and I could paste it into a new Word document if I wanted to, say for your homework assignment. So that was just a copy, paste, control C, and then control V in Word. All right, I hope that that helps you with your assignment for this week for the part where you are asked to make a frequency polygon.